In this video, I'm going to share how to get the best looking skin tone on Sony cameras like the A7 Mark IV, the FX3 and also the A7S III. I'll be sharing my favorite profile settings and my personal secret to getting that extra pop through color grading. I'm also going to clear up the misconceptions around white balance and how it affects creative floods. Since the launch of the A7S III, I've been experimenting with these cameras, trying out different picture profiles with my main focus on skin tones. After various comparisons, I've come to identify the three best profiles, S-Log3, S-Cinetone and Picture Profile Turned Off. The funny thing is that number 2 and 3 doesn't even come close to number 1. When it comes down purely to what looks best, S-Log3 wins every time. Two reasons I'm pro S-Log3 is number one, the dynamic range is far superior to any other picture profile. And second, because of the variety of options you have in post, from one click LUTs to color space transform and various film stock emulations, shooting in lock consistently gives me the best looking visuals. I use the default PP8 setting with S Gamma 3 Cine with the detail dialed down to minus seven by default. And my advice is to keep it there. My argument against baked in profiles like S Cine Tone and PP Off is that I don't really see it as a quicker turnaround. Yet you lose quite a bit of dynamic range. With one click LUTs and color space transform, it's so quick and easy to duplicate the conversion into all your clips that any additional tweaks would need to be made to the baked in profiles anyway. But choosing a picture profile is only part of the process. The real secret to beautiful skin tone is and always have been white balance. Now some will argue that white balancing will make your images too neutral and take away the creative look. And you're not wrong. But there's only three scenarios where this is true. Number one, if you go for an intentional look, like for example the matrix, where the skin tones are mostly green, unnaturally green, here correcting the image completely goes against the creative intent of the overall theme set out in the matrix universe. Number two, when the lighting in the scene makes the white balance impossible or impractical, like during a golden sunset or working with colored lights. And then most important, number three, when using one click solutions like phantom lights, but not knowing where to draw the line between white balance and the creative look intended by the creator. And this will be the main focus of this tutorial. How do I balance for skin tones without my visuals looking too neutral or destroying the creative look? The number one reason skin tones look bad is because the mid-tones are not properly balanced. And slapping on your favorite light won't magically fix this. I'm using DaVinci Resolve, but the language is the same in Premiere Pro and Final Cut. We'll start with Joel Famolaro's Neutral LUT. Although I still need to adjust contrast, this image is perfectly white balanced, indicated in three places. Since we're dealing with skin tone, the first place I'm going to look is on the vector scope. When isolating the skin with the qualifier, you can see that it's right on the flesh line. If you have any intention of getting beautiful natural skin tone, the vector scope is a non-negotiable. One of my favorite things about DaVinci Resolve is the ability to see my skin tone with this little circle by just hovering over an area on the skin. And if it's in the center, I know it's on the money. The skin tone indicator is accurate on all skin, regardless of race. And for darker skin, I just switch it to the lows for a more accurate display. Opening the waveform reveals the state of the highlights at the top and the shadows at the bottom. I made the model wear something that's pure black and pure white to illustrate how the highlights and the shadows work on the waveform. When I cool down the image, you can see how they split apart in the RGB colors and how they pop back into place into white when you reset it. Perfect balance. Having a reference of pure black and pure white, a middle gray card or a color checker is ideal for not only capturing the white balance on site, but also to tweak it in post if it's not perfectly captured in camera. I call these anchor points. But what happens when you apply a creative flood, like Utopia or Jamaica? In this example, nothing really, because of the perfect white balance of the neutral clip. When you compare the images next to each other, even though they all look different, the skin tone is still accurate on the vector scope. Success, right? Well, maybe in this case. The real challenge comes in when you start dealing with color costs caused by lower quality ND filters or light reflecting off surfaces. In this case, green bouncing back from all the foliage in the frame. Even though I used the same method to capture the white balance in camera, we're still getting some excess green in the midtones indicated on the flesh line. In an ideal scenario where you have your anchor points, correction is quick and easy. But even if you don't have pure black or pure white, 
Just having skin tone is as simple as dragging the mid-tones to the flesh line and voila, problem solved. Well, it depends if you like the look. If you want to warm up the image, do it in the mid-tones. Just keep it in line with the skin tone indicator. Ultimately, you're not bound to neutrality, as long as you're intentional with your choice. Another option is to isolate the skin tone using the HSL qualifier and to do the final tweaks there. In other words, only correcting the skin tone but leaving the rest of the image untouched. In some scenarios, I like to add a slight pop to the face by boosting the luminosity in the mid-tones, but be careful not to overdo it. Getting a perfect key can be tricky, so sometimes you'll need to mask it to exclude other elements in the frame. But all the good editors have a tracking feature, so even if your subject moves, it's not the most difficult task, but it's totally worth the extra step, especially in the commercial and glamour space. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.